Podcast. We demystify what goes on behind the therapy room door. Join us on this voyage of discovery and co-creative conversations. This is The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors podcast with Bob Cook and Jackie Jones. Welcome back to the next episode, which is episode 125, Bob. Can you believe it? I know. Um, And in this, we're going to kind of go right back to the beginning with this one. And we're going to be looking at how to prepare for your first client, which I'm not sure you can even remember that far back, Bob. (laughs) Well, you know, I was thinking about this. Because you told me in the last podcast what this would be. So... I started training in 1986 at Metanoa Psychotherapy Training Institute. That's a long time ago. That's what, where are we now? 23? So that's 37 years ago, is it? Something like that? Yeah. yeah. Now, in those days, psychotherapy is a bit like the Wild West. What I mean by that is it really just started, it, it was in its infancy in the United Kingdom. And the, there wasn't much regulation around in many ways. So the UKCP, as a major regulating body, hadn't even been created. Yeah. BACP, which was in its creation, the BAC wasn't even created. Um, I was training in transaction analysis, and there was a European Association of Transaction Analysis, which was a created, I can't remember where, when, perhaps it was 78, maybe it was 80. But anyway... There was no national regulating bodies, really. So that's what I meant by the Wild West, because... um, And Metanoa Psychotherapy Training Institute, one of the first psychotherapy training institutes in London, I think the TA programme, and I don't think they had any... I think they had one more training programme, actually, in Gestalt Psychotherapy. Um, But neither of them, as I said, there weren't the national... There wasn't the UK CP, ACP or other regulating bodies around. So they, um, I was part of this European one. Okay, but this is right at the beginning of psychotherapy in this country. Where we are in 23, there's many regulating bodies. Yeah. Training is usually a four year program or could be more. Um, BAC counseling courses are usually four years, three years, and sometimes two years, but they have level one, sorry, level two, three, four, five, and six. Um, and the training I was on was a four-year training program, actually, which was regulated by the European, European Association of Transaction Analysis. But it was before the days of placements. It was before the days of essays. It was before the days of requirement of hours. It was before the days of many different things. And I'll just show you how wild it was. Uh, I could start seeing clients probably in the first three or four months of the first year. Wow. (laughs) That shows how absolutely we're in a different world. So training is completely different in terms of regulation requirements. And I think I... Well, it's interesting because I think in the February of that year, I saw my first client. So that'd be February 87, something like that. No, it'd be no past then. What was it? I can't remember. I was just thinking it was February. might have been be earlier. But um, so I do remember my first client. I remember very well. Um, and I remember me thinking, how shall I prepare for this first session yeah. and I had no idea yeah me neither <laughs> there is no preparation for the first <laughs> one <laughs> probably with people now they they don't see clients so early in their training they usually start off in placements yeah they usually have done clinical competency practices before they get to the placements yeah so there's used to be lots of discussions and training about what happens or might happen or could happen They've probably got a supervisor on all these different things. Yeah. So you trained in 2010, was it, or something? 2012. Yeah. So you will have done placements, wouldn't you? No. You trained at our MIP, didn't you? Where are the placements going then? 
Oh, you right, would. yeah, well, I did the low-cost therapy. Yeah, that's a placement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a placement. Yeah. So you would have done that in your second year? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you would have probably do, even done clinical competencies. Yeah. You practiced these competencies to have them evaluated by a trainer. Yeah. So you've got this whole discussion, this whole platform of experience, which is protecting you with everything else. Yeah. Back when I started, there wasn't any of that. No. That's why I'm, that's why I smiled to myself. Wild West, said, yeah. <laughs> what what should this first session be like? So I thought, so how it happened was this is back in the day. So anybody listen to this, pardon me if you know if it, I don't know people's ages, but back in the day where I decided to advertise, try and get clients, because there weren't placements and things like that was something called Yellow Pages. Loved the Yellow Pages. It was a really good doorstop. It used to hold the door open. <laughs> <laughs> so I decided I'm going to advertise in the Yellow Pages. Now, the problem with that in many ways was, well, it, it was positive it worked, by the way, but I didn't think about, well, what do I do if somebody phones me up what do I say to them on the phone? How do I work out whether they're suitable for psychotherapy? Any of this assessment stuff yeah. I hadn't really thought about. And I was very surprised when they actually phoned me up. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody did phone me up, and I wasn't quite sure what to say on the phone. Um, and to my credit, I'd had supervision. I had managed to get myself a supervisor and had spoken to them sort of about four days before this yellow page ad came out. So I had some training, if you like, on assessment and what to ask. Um, and uh, this person who was, you know, probably about 30 at the time, 29, he decided he'd like to have a therapy with me. So we arranged a time. And I can't believe I did this, but I arranged it at 12 o'clock, that's midday, on a Saturday which A, is working the weekends, but B, much more prevalent. It was across um, a television program that was on at that time of the day called Football Focus, <laughs> which I always watched, <laughs> Football Addict. Now, this was really devastating. It may not be for you, but it was. <laughs> of course, I did, then didn't, because this person stayed with me for over two and a half years, I never saw Football Focus again for two and a half years. That's so funny, Bob. I can't believe that that's the one thing that's coming to mind. Well, it is. It, it, well, if you think of preparing for your first session, yeah. I think it's important to think about, well, am I going to work out of social hours? Yeah. Like at a weekend, for yeah. example. Um, what time, if I am going to do that, uh, does that then interfere on my... Well, it did in this case, I've just told you. Yeah. But interfering uh, my social time, and I'm, I'm not prepared to do that. And a, a going along with that, Bob, as well, I think it's important to, to look at it long term. This isn't just a short term thing. You might think, oh, well, I can give up my Saturdays for a couple of months. This client stayed with you for a couple of years. Yes. So it, it's about doing those, you know, unsociable hours long term, maybe. Yeah. Very good thing to say, but it didn't occur to me at the time. <laughs> so this is a tip for people listening. It's a really good thing you've just said there to think about if you're going to work long term uh, clients, then yes, it's a very good thing to think about. Yeah. One of the things, do you know what I mean? For me, is <laughs> to, in order for people to pay when, you know, we're in private practice, the majority of them are in work Monday to Friday, nine to five. So a lot of my clients early on were after six o'clock. So it, it was a lot of, e in fact, I still do a lot of evening work. Do you know what I mean? So it's not like being employed by somebody and having a working day. And I did used to work weekends, but found I, I gave that up as soon as I could. Yeah. Well, I used to watch Top of the Pops. Do you remember that? I do remember that, yeah, on when a Thursday night. <laughs> when I started seeing clients, I never saw Top of the Pops again for years. 
I don't know. You survived the early days, Bob. I really don't. I don't think I did survive it very well because many, many of my favourite programmes, especially around football, I didn't see for years. Uh, I know, again, there's a programme called The Prisoner on around that time. I never saw the ending of that. But I mean, honestly, you can catch up on YouTube now, Bob, if you want to. <laughs> on a serious note, you're correct. It is important to think about this in terms of social time. If you're going to see somebody long term, I think it's an important consideration how to prepare for your first client in terms of the logistics of the appointment. Yeah. So I think it's a very good point. And I didn't. Yeah. Um, but what I did do in the time before the person came was my phone my supervisor again for a second session, because I had one already, um, talk, <laughs> talking about, I think I found one on a Tuesday. Um, she lived in London. And I was saying, well, you know, how shall I, how shall I, how, shall, how, how do I prepare my room? Do I have the uh, chairs opposite each other? And if they are opposite each other, how how should I get a sort of ruler out and measure how much distance there is between one chair to the other chair? And should I have the chair at the side? Because if I've got the chair opposite my client, I might be staring into their eyes and they might feel intimidated. So I got myself obsessed. Yeah with how the environment that my client was walking into. So should I make them a cup of tea? Do I make do I need to make sure that um, there's some water around, all these biscuits around, all these things. And what and how many cushions should I have? And should my cushions be colour coordinated? And should there be tissues in the room? And I, my supervisor, I think after listening to me for about 40 minutes, Said it's okay, just calm down. <laughs> <laughs> so if we're preparing for a first session, even though I went over the the top and I was projecting my anxiety onto all these practical things, I do think it's important. Absolutely. To the environment that the person's coming into. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Do you? Yes. Yeah. Do you, anybody again on YouTube, you can kind of see this is this is where I see clients behind this this part. This is my working room. So this bit is where I do my videos and the other bit. But I I paid a lot of attention to it. Do you know what I mean? There's a couch on one side and then there's my chair. I've had clients that come in and want to sit in my chair, which is absolutely fine. Do you know what I mean? But does I agree with you. Do you put the chairs directly facing each other or on a, a slant or you know what's yeah what what do you do that's right so it's, i think it's an important point what i said was that most people they are anxious because it's their <laughs> first client yeah and most people project their anxiety out onto practical things and often to the supervisor they're talking about i did it obsessively uh so when she started to talk about, well, we can talk about that in a minute, just calm down, do you feel anxious? Yeah. Once I talk about my anxiety, then the obsession about getting a ruler out, about measuring how much yeah. the distance from one chair ceased. Good. I think that it, as well it's <laughs> worth mentioning that sometimes we're hiring a room or using somebody else's yeah, room, so we don't point. really get much chance to do anything other than jiggle the furniture a little bit maybe that's a really good point because uh many many people do hire rooms out yeah uh, depending on where they are of course or depending on the policy and regulations that that organization has so they yeah. might have rooms and regulations about well you can't change the pictures you can't change this you can't do that you can't so there's no personalization of the room yeah, and you might only have it for one day a week. So, do you know what I mean? You need to work from nine o'clock in the morning right through till nine o'clock at night because that's the only day that you can see clients, you know, so you might be limited to certain things. I still think for the first sessions, when you're starting out, one way to, even if you're working in that type of organisation you just talked about, there will be small things you can do. Yeah. There will be, whether yeah. it's 
bringing in tissues, yes. whether it's about bringing in different types of um, cushions, whether it's about there will be things you can do. Yes. Because for me as well, I like a throw. Do you know what I mean? I don't know why, but when I'm in a therapy session, as in I'm the client, I always feel cold. I don't know why that is, but I always feel cold and need the toilet. Mm. Whatever that's about, I don't know. So that's another thing to be mindful of. Do you know what I mean? Having a bathroom available to the clients. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's really important because because of the relational needs for safety and security yeah are really important things like warmth yeah yeah things like well many of the things that will help somebody feel secure are really important to attend to yeah um also if you're working with somebody who's anxious somebody who's getting in touch with their younger self somebody who's regressed, somebody who's not in their adult, they might be so full of anxiety, fear or scare, whichever way you want to talk about it, going to, to going to the toilets is really important for them. Yeah. So, so I think it's really important there's a toilet. I think it's really important it's warm. I think it's really important it's secure. I think it's really important it's safe. And it's important for the therapist, I think, at the beginning when they're going through probably their you know, the admin contract, whatever that is, to show the client, well, this is where a toilet is and, yeah. you, know, you know, and all the various really important things around security and safety. So the person feels, oh, well, this is a place I can actually feel uh, safe in. Yeah, because one of the things that I always thought, and I think it goes back to when I was a foster carer, I often used to think what it was like for the foster kids the morning after they'd been placed with us, how it would feel to be in a strange house with somebody that I'd never met before, that first morning coming downstairs. Do you know what I mean? And and I would have hated that. So for me, with, with new clients, not necessarily me as a new therapist, but with all my new clients, I give them as much information about the area that I am, where's the best place to park, do you know what I mean? On my website, there's a picture of the outside of my house, so that it's familiar to that. That you know, there's there's quite a bit of thought gone into putting my clients at ease on that first session. Yes, and I think that's very very important. And people that ignore that or discount it or minimise what we're talking about here, I think it can promote a place where the client may not feel that safe to do the work they need to do. Yeah. The other thing that I did on my first session was had reams and reams and reams of activities and things I could do because I didn't feel confident in my ability to just be in the moment with clients. It was like, no, I need, I need something that I can work through <laughs> step by step. <laughs> Yeah, well, I know you like a lot of diagrams and techniques, but all these things are important. And they're often, you know, we just talk about security and safety for the client, which I think is extraordinarily important. Yeah. We also need to think about how do we maintain our anxiety ourselves in that first session? Yeah. Because the therapist, by definition, it's their first session, they're going to be hugely, highly anxious, highly anxious. And how do we take care of ourselves so that we can soothe our own anxiety? Now, if that's by lots of exercises, techniques, no, whatever it is, that's not bad. Yeah. I think. I can remember in my early days, because I used to rent a room from you at MIP. And, you, you know, it was interesting because there was, you know, therapists that had been there for years and like me, a newly qualified one and everything. And I remember one therapist used to have a snooze in between clients. And I can remember <laughs> thinking, there's no way that I could be that relaxed in between clients that I would literally lie on the couch and have a, a 10 minute snooze in between clients or whatever. But yeah, that's what they did to uh, take uh, care uh, of themselves. Uh, yeah, maybe. But I bet that person's quite experienced and I bet that person, it wasn't their first session. Absolutely not. No. So, you know, 
for me, I think it was a really good environment as a first time psychotherapist to be a, amongst therapists that had been doing the job for different amounts of time to see yeah. it's not all bad. <laughs> yeah. So how we manage our anxiety is really important to think about. Yeah. Um, another thing which is absolutely important to think about is safety and protection. And, and I don't know how many people, and I've never done any research on this, see their clients for the first time at home. You know, there. Okay. So your first client wasn't in the placement at MIP, it was at home. Oh, no, I, right, I'm with you. you. My very first one. No, it wasn't. It was at MIP. Yeah, yeah. That's right. So in a way, the organisation took care of the safety of the building. Yeah. The fact that there's other people around. Yeah. So in a way, that's that's gr that's great for you because they don't have to think about this. Yes. Yeah. The people who work from home for whatever reasons, economic or whatever it is, so their first session is at home. They need to think about several things around protection for themselves. Yeah. That's really important. And that will start off in the assessment. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. It, Again, at MIP, I did the assessment, so I probably worked out the placements for you, actually, all those years ago. Yeah. If you're doing it yourself on the telephone, um, you know, you're. it's really important because, in essence, you're inviting a stranger into your house. Yeah. Yeah. And when so, I did, even though I was experienced, as in, you know, a couple of years in, even when I yeah. did start seeing clients from my house I can remember feeling really vulnerable when I first started and even asking the question should I have a panic button yeah well that see that's a very very real question and and actually a supervisor might suggest you do have a panic button especially if you work for a loan from your house yeah it's your first client you're gonna be tremendously anxiety it could even be somebody well it'll be a stranger probably yeah um, you know, it's a very important question to take to a supervisor, that. Yeah. And, and, you know, the advice supervisors might give will be things which might go from panic buttons to make sure your friend knows when you start a session and when you end a session. Yeah. And is there anybody else in the house? And if there isn't, make sure that you fix up things with friends who know when you start and when you finish. I think that's what I did was to, because for confidentiality, obviously you can't be sharing lots of information about who you are seeing, but no. you can say, I will be with clients from this time to this time. Do you know what I mean? So that if they don't hear from you afterwards, then something might have happened. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think to think about your own protection, think about where you're going to be working from is really important. Yeah especially if you live alone. In fact, you know, I think it needs to be a lot of supervision about if you're alone seeing clients, you know, for vis-a-vis -vis being in an, org in an organization or working from a center or working from a place where there's a lot of people around. It's a big discussion, I think. Yeah. In the early days or generally as a psychotherapist, Generally, anyway, but okay. I was talking about this part. Well, generally, yeah, anyway. Yeah. Um, hopefully through supervision, I've worked it out more and all these sorts of things. But in terms of a first session, particularly. Yeah. It's, it's strange as well, because I suppose, you know, as you're talking about, the, you know, the safety, I, I personally can remember feeling quite vulnerable in the early days when I was doing it. And I was thinking... Would I have felt that way if I was a man? I don't know. Is it just talking about females on their own? Or potentially anybody is can be open to something happening in a therapy room? Yeah, I mean, as a male, now my first client was a male, so I didn't feel what I'm going to say now. But, you know, generally, if you think about it, just as a man with a woman, the opposite sex, yeah. a male is just as open to... Allegations or allegations or whatever, yeah. you know, uh, as the same sex. So we live in a world now where, you know, um, 
it may I was just thinking of protection, but I know it, I know this is a really important area for people to think about when they have their first clients. Yeah. Yeah. I think man how we manage our anxiety is a really important thing to I think as I said, the environment and the safety and everything else. Yeah. I also think to have your supervisor set up is really important. And may and if you can have a session before you see your first client with your supervisor. I mean, back in then, I remember, as I said, phoning my supervisor up for at least one session, maybe even two, I can't quite remember, before I saw this person. Mainly to deal with all the anxiety I had. Yeah. See, again, we I didn't really have much of that because we were trained at MIP. Part of the course was to have supervision, so we automatically took our low-cost clients to supervision. It was a very cosseted way of doing it, which is why... Yeah. I yeah. loved it. You know, for two years, we were still training and had supervision. And it was a very nurturing way of becoming a psychotherapist. Obviously, you put a lot of thought into that, Bob. I did. And I think maybe a lot of people listening on the on various counselling courses or therapy courses will have what is called placements now. Yeah. Where, uh, you know, all these things are considered. Um, they have to have a placement supervisor and they should be having a session, I think, before they start seeing their first client. And if they work in, well, they, sh you know, Beacon or Mind or whatever placement provider we're talking about, they should be providing the assessment process. Yeah. They should be providing the premises, XXXX. Yeah. Now, MIP had very nice premises, and I know not all placement providers do. But or spoke and I think these are the things that are important in the first session. And you need to make it, I think this is one really big tip, to make it as easy as possible for you, which means minimizing your own anxiety usually. Yeah. Because in general, the clients would usually be more scared than you. I can remember you saying that to me, Bob. I literally <laughs> can you've just broken that. I can remember. Do you know what I mean? And the other question I think that I asked you was, am I going to damage them if I get it wrong? That was a big fear of mine. If I get this wrong in the therapy room, potentially I'm going to damage this person. Yeah. This is where supervision is really important, isn't it? Yeah. When you start seeing clients. Yeah. Anything I mean, else? Ultimately, you are going to be anxious on your first session. You're not, it's not going to be perfect. I think you need to prepare yourself for the fact that you're going to be scared when you walk into that first session. Yeah. And yeah. it's and okay. <laughs> well, actually, I'll go further than that. It's really odd if you weren't anxious. Yeah. Something very wrong if you don't have level of anxiousness or apprehensiveness. But the, the main thing is that you have that first session, that you do it. Don't talk yourself out of it. Yeah, that's a big one. You have to, it's really important. And most groups I know, again, on our training, that have got placements, you have a social Facebook page where they actually do sort of, not talk about all the confidential, I'm not talking about the confidential stuff here. I'm yes. just talking about, you know, uh, You've had your first session, you know, and it didn't collapse, did you, or whatever it is. Yeah. The confidential stuff and the anxiety stuff all goes to the supervisor. But there is something about mutual conversation, if you like. Yeah. So people have gone down the same road. Yeah, absolutely. And I was really honest and open with the people that I was in training with. Do you know what I mean? I think you need to be in that safe space where you can talk about the things that you get wrong and how you felt without fear of judgment or criticism. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's a really another big thing, isn't it, for people just starting their first session is support. Yeah. Peer support. Yeah. Colleague. Not yeah. just a supervisor. Supervisor obviously really important, but you know, colleagues, peers, people going down the same road as you. Yeah. Really important. Yeah, absolutely. It, it is. It, it's a. It's a nice community to be in. I think as a psychotherapist, it's a good way. 
again, to manage your anxiety and to manage what you just talked about there, often might be unrealistic, unrealistic expectations. Because when you're just starting off, of course, like everything else, you have to learn by mistakes. You have to learn by challenges. You have to learn by difficulties. And if you don't, then actually you're in the wrong career. Yeah. Yeah. But I remember my first session like yesterday and how, I exact, how mine. anxious yeah. I felt. Now, yeah. now, the other thing about that, I was amazed he ever came back because uh, <laughs> first of all, it was very late. And secondly, I have no idea, well, in general terms, I do, Jack, so I'm sort of exaggerating. Uh, <laughs> a, I have, a, I, <laughs> smiling because I just remember this, how I got through the session. And secondly, what on earth did the person talk about? Because, <laughs> because my anxiety was so high. I mean, I know they talked about, you know, what their issue was and everything else. But to be perfectly honest, that 15 minutes, no, it wasn't 15, it was three quarters of an hour because I came late, went so quick. Yeah. I had to, when they went away, first of all, I had to write down what I did remember, which wasn't much. Uh, and I, I'd convinced myself that they'd come back anyway. So I was amazed when they came back and it came back and came back and came back anyway. So I think it's important to prepare yourself as much as you can to minimize your anxiety and and also disappointment and uh, victories and things that go on on the way. But that's my biggest tip, I think, to minimise yourself. So to to really prepare how to manage your own anxieties or disappointments. Yeah. Do you think it's important or not important to mention to the client that you are new to this? Well, that's a wonderful question. According to what supervisor you get, well, we'll say different things. I think that in terms of ethicality and transparency, it's important. See, again, I didn't have to worry about that because the low-cost clients, it was it an understanding that they were newly yeah, yeah. trained or in training psychotherapists, so it was kind of the done. But I'm just thinking outside of, of that. No, I think you need to. And also yeah. your advices should reflect that you're a trainee anyway. So, no, I think it's very important that if it's, that's your first client, that when you advertise and when you accept somebody um, and in the contractual stages, you say that you're a training psychotherapist and several things happen there. One, it will take anxiety off you. Number that's two, what I was thinking, yeah. Number two, you've got transparency. Three, your prices should reflect that. So yeah. Yeah. That, that might be one of the reasons they come anyway. Um, and also then the client will feel more honoured by your level of transparency and honesty. Yeah. Yes, is the answer to the question. Good, I'm glad, because I, I think I would say that that's important as well. Mainly for the first bit, that it will help with our anxiety if the other person knows that we're in training. Yeah. Yeah. I did that. I definitely did that for all the reasons I've just said, and I would certainly recommend that everybody does. Yeah. And like I said, you know, I would recommend MIP for anybody that wants to get into this training. I'm always, you know, singing your praises. The way that it was, it's set up, it's designed, it's very, it's a smooth process that sees you from the start on the, you know, transactional analysis 101 all the way through to being a fully fledged person. No, I do agree it helps in terms of safety, security, transparency, assessment, all the things we're talking about here. And uh, I hope some of the tips we've said in, in this uh, video will help people and might also remind themselves, I think of the more experienced people might be listening, and take themselves back to that first time with their first client. And I think it, I, I think to remember the beginning and how it was and how we've grown and where you are and where you've come to today is yeah. it's important to reflect on the journey. 
And I love listening to your stories, Bob, because for me, you've been, you, you're my mentor and my guru and you've been doing this forever. But to, to hear you talking about your early days of being a psychotherapist, doing it at 12 o'clock on a Saturday and not being able to watch a football program. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. I was, I I've that. always <laughs> been an avid football person, Manchester City particularly. And um, that I don't know what earth took me to do that. But I... On reflection now, talking this through, it would have been around anxiety. Yeah. Over adapting to the person in front of me. Yeah. Or on the phone in this case. Yeah. When they could fit in rather than when you were willing well, to do that's it. Yeah. Very cool, yeah. yeah. And again, you know, looking at it long term, which is one of the reasons why I said yeah. you've got to think that yeah. you're doing this long yeah. term, is because resentment can set in if you're not being able to do what you want because you're seeing a client. So don't go there. <laughs> Don't do it yeah. when football focus is on. <laughs> or the equivalent, anyway. Yeah, or Coronation Street. It's never a good at half past seven on a, a Monday, Wednesday or Friday either. Yeah, oh, yeah, blimey, yes. <laughs> so, Bob, until next time, we're, what we're going to be looking yeah. at, yeah, which is yeah. up your street, important books that will be influential for the clinical therapist, a review of literature. So maybe your top oh. titles or something. Oh, well, I... I... You know, I could talk forever. Honestly, I think I've had, I think I've probably got nearly all books that have been written in transaction analysis since 1960. I reviewed most of them. And I think I've got most of the integrated books in terms of Erskine and many, 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 many. So that podcast, I do not know how we're going to fit it into the 40 minutes. Uh, I, I, you'll have to rein me back in in the podcast and then there's of course all the you know all the books that you've written as well well red, we, red, not red, i mean yes we could do a part one and part two if it's going to be a long one but we'll i was just going to say i don't think there's a podcast that goes by that you don't throw a book title in there that's no, relevant to the podcasts be, you're probably right because if i'm going to mention a book i'm going to talk about how that fits in what it's about and yeah. Why should people should read it? I don't know if we can do it in two, but we can maybe have a part one and two if need be. Yeah. And and anyway, what was the second one which we probably won't get round to, but we might get round to? Um, how we present ourselves in the therapy room and does it matter? Yes. I think it I I think I don't know if we're gonna get around to that, but at least I'll know what the one is for the three weeks after or whatever it is. Yeah. So come back and you'll be surprised whether we're doing a one or two or, or what. Or a hybrid. A hybrid, yeah, mix them all up. So until next time, Bob, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Take care, bye. You've been listening to The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. We'll be back next week with another episode.